let me say first off that as president of the National Education Association, I am certainly not afraid of sitting down with people I have deep disagreements with. I have, uh, I have actually argued in the Oval Office of the White House with President Obama about high stakes standardized tests being a bad thing. And he was telling me about accountability and I was telling him about research. And uh, we, had a, we, had a pretty, we had a pretty good argument. Um, and in the end, uh, I think we convinced him, not just the National Education Association, not just the AFT, but parents and business leaders and researchers and uh, people that had two brain cells to rub together could sit down and explain why you could not judge a whole happy human child by a math and reading standardized test and make high stakes decisions about education based on that. And because of that, we convinced him to sign a new law that put an end to high stakes standardized tests mandated by the federal government. You can still do some amazingly stupid things in your state or local school district, but at least it wouldn't come down uh, on high from all 50 states. Um, Donald Trump is something different. This is not George Bush. This is not whatever Republican may have come around. <laughs> this is something that frightens us to our core. And if it doesn't frighten you to have him president of the United States of America, you are not paying attention. This man, in his inaugural speech, painted this horrible, dark, demonic picture of the world and what we have to fear. And the only mention he made of public education was that public schools were flush with cash. And it was resulting in failure for our students that we had too much money. He has committed $20 billion without telling anyone where it would come from to give us competition in the private sector. Privately managed for-profit charter schools, vouchers for selective uh, religious uh, <coughs> parochial schools. That is his answer, and he has put in charge of the Department of Education a woman who has spent 30 years and her sizable fortune built on selling Amway products, if you know what pyramid schemes are. Um, the, she has spent 30 years focused on defunding public schools. That is strategic. It is not just giving parents choices of privatized charter schools or private school vouchers. You have to create a clientele for those privatized schools. And so you make sure that schools, especially schools in the most vulnerable, uh, poverty-stricken communities, you make sure that they have as little as possible so that desperate parents are desperate to get their children out of these failed public schools. And you offer them an empty promise of your child will get a fabulous private education at these for-profit schools that use pseudo-teachers, lots and lots of kids sitting in front of uh, computer screens, as little as possible that you can give those children. Why? Because you have an obligation to your investors. This is a business. And Betsy DeVos calls it the education industry. She is now our Secretary of Education who couldn't be bothered to come. Thank God. Now, where do we go from here? Uh, that is a description of what you could read in any newspaper. 
Um, what Stephanie and I want to talk about up here today is how do you move forward in this horrific um, era of Donald Trump? Helmer, how could you put up his picture? It just kind of gives us all. We're, how are we going to have dinner tonight? This is, this is not ever, ever a good thing. What we have decided to do is you have to go around them. You can't allow them to defeat you. You have to say, what can we do without anyone's permission? And I really have to thank all of the previous speakers because it all leads exactly, because we didn't make this up. We learned from so many of you and your experiences. And we know where the promised land is going to lead us. What President Obama signed into law, I think there is a Department of Poetry at the federal government. No child left behind. Now we have every student succeeds. They just come up with the most adorable names for things that have absolutely nothing to do with um, what uh, they're supposed to do. But we're going to take this opportunity called the Every Student Succeeds Act. It no longer contains test and punish. What it does is it says that every one of our 50 states, we do not have a national system. Unlike the rest of the world, our school systems are state by state. The national role was always supposed to be to oversee the civil, oh, it's not fair, okay, to oversee um, the civil right of children to have equal opportunity and equal access from the times that we had segregated schools. So we now have a federal law that says every state must describe a dashboard of what you consider student success beyond test scores and student services. What are you providing these students so that they can succeed? We are promoting the idea that instead of looking at, um, as No Child Left Untested did, going and finding the worst schools and then saying you're going to punish them and threaten them to shut them down or turn them over to private uh, businesses to manage, we said, wouldn't it make a lot of sense to go into the best public schools in a state? When you um, correct for poverty, U.S. schools that have very little poverty are at the top of every um, indicator. Go into the best public schools with a clipboard, a piece of paper, and a pencil. Write down what those kids got. What did you give them? Class size, science labs, art departments, a school nurse, a library with books in it. Um, all of the things that you gave those kids that helped them be successful, make that your standard. And the last thing I wanna leave you with, and I think where Stephanie will pick up, we are focused on the state departments of education and on the local school districts and what we can do there, but also in the building. We want to talk about resource equity in every school building. And we want to talk about, um, we don't call it professional autonomy. We've been talking about professional authority, collaborative authority. Beyond just being a great teacher in your own little classroom, what are you doing as a learning community in your school to make decisions that you should have the right to make as the professional who knows the names of those children. And we believe that that will be our union value to our members. Thank you. Okay, so since I am the last speaker before drinks, I will go very quickly. Um, first and foremost, uh, President Randy Weingarten will be here tomorrow, and so you'll just have to deal with me tonight. Um, and thank you to our Scotland unions for having us, and also to EI um, for hosting this. 
As Lily mentioned, um, unfortunately, Betsy DeVos was not here, but considering she today said this quote, just like the traditional taxi system revolted against the ride sharing, Uber and Lyft, so too did the traditional education establishment revolt against school choice, charters and funding private education with public dollars. So since she just said it today, I think we can all understand that her absence is not going to be such a loss. Okay. Also with the election of Trump, um, I think you understand that public education in America has um, been escalated to a further attack on us. And you just heard what we were able to do with President Obama and what we need to do now. And as Lily mentioned, we are turning our focus to our states and locals. Because in the United States, we have the federal government and they offer some funding and policies. But then our states, that's where a lot of the policy work is focused. And then also our locals, so our school districts. And so what um, the unions started to do and what we're still doing is they worked with our national um, conference of state legislatures to create with our states to create policies that are actually what we need to see, what our students need. And what's so important about this report is they say, it didn't matter which political party, they say, stop the reforms. What we are trying to do to American schools, we're, we're like, oh wait, let's hold our third graders back. Oh wait, let's just test them 80 days out of 182. Let's continue doing that. No. We're going to stop. We're going to make sure we actually look at what our students need. We'll look at research. We'll go to our best schools. And that's what we're going to implement. We're not going to force all of our students going to college. We're actually going to bring back career tech classes because, by the way, those have been out of our funding of our schools in addition to the libraries and arts and sciences. Yes, sciences have not been in a lot of our schools. So this report that came out, which was across the United States, was like, we need to change our path because it's not working. And I will say to a lot of you, thank you, because the legislators actually visited a lot of your countries and said, okay, we do need to do something differently. So that's what um, we are focused on doing. We're also focused on looking at um, states getting our members together and we are mobilizing our collective power of the voice. And specifically in New Mexico, we created, based upon our state and our students, a legislative platform to give legislators the best education research out there, what it means to our New Mexico babies and students and pupils. And then we took this with us to our legislative session and said, this is the blueprint. This is what teachers are saying and research are saying is the blueprint for our students. And we worked really hard. Now, unfortunately, we have a governor, just like Terrence had to deal with Betsy DeVos in Michigan, who is going to veto our education policy. And we will continue to resist hers and we will continue to fight back like we need to with Trump. Um, and we will win at the end of the day because we have to, because our students and our communities rely on us. We can't stop because the people who are interested in privatizing our public education system are waiting for us to take a break. And so I leave you with this. Here in the, in the United States, the unions, we are here to fight as a global society, the privatization movement in your country, and we invite you to fight it in ours as well, because Trump is not going to win. Thank you.